Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel Pumpkin Becky. I am a huge advocate for pet ownership, I think it is a really wonderful thing to do. But the good stuff comes with the not so good stuff and today we're going to look at the other side of pet ownership. Let's get started. If you're following us on Facebook and Instagram, you'll know that we're having a pretty tough time of it at the moment. Back in January, we lost Molly. In June, we lost Jane Marple. In July, we lost Sophie. And in August, we lost Cookie. And Heidi. Now on paper, that looks pretty bad um, but let me assure you that Molly and the hamsters had all reached a very good age and it was Jane who was suffering from a chronic condition so we had to make the decision to put her to sleep. Phoebe and I want to talk to you about the sorts of things you need to think about really seriously before you bring a pet into your life. Quick change of guinea pig, we've now got Tilly instead of Phoebe. So once you've decided that you've got space for this particular animal or bird, you need to really, really think about whether you can afford to look after it. And that's beyond food and bedding and somewhere to live. We're talking about toys and environmental enrichment, but also more seriously, we're talking about vet bills. Now they might be expected bills like microchipping, injections, but you also have to be prepared to incur an awful lot of unexpected vet bills. That might be a short-term illness, but it could well be a chronic illness as well. It could be dental care, it could be x-rays and scans, it could be blood tests, biopsies, operations, <laughs> urine and stool analysis. You can expect to pay upwards of £25 for a vet consultation. Everything else will be on top of that. So it really is worthwhile thinking about putting money aside regularly for a vet fund because you never know when you're going to need it. Tilly, I love you. Oh, what a kitten. The next thing to do once you've brought your pet home is to watch it and learn what is normal behaviour for your pet. Guinea pigs are normally quite gregarious. My Tilly is a very private person and she doesn't really like to hang out with the other guinea pigs and she just likes to be private. And that's fine, that's just Tilly. We all have our own personalities. And now Emily's come to tell you that it's really important to check your animal over regularly. In one of our little checkups, we discovered she had a lump on her side. So we took her to the vets and had it checked out. And it is just a fatty lump, it's nothing sinister. Well, we check her over regularly to make sure it still feels the same size and shape and if we're worried at all we just take her back to the vet and they will run another test for us. Please don't try and self-diagnose these things with the internet or books. As good as they are, they will never be as good as a vet who has real life experience and knows what they are feeling. Getting proper care and treatment for your pet is the surest way of extending their life or maybe even curing them. Now my little fidget cherry has come to tell you about knowing when it's time to say goodbye to your pet. Now that could be because you can no longer offer it the kind of care that it needs. Maybe you've had a change in circumstances and you just can't look after your pet properly anymore. Please do not abandon your pet. Hear so many sad stories about animals just being dumped. Please make the effort to find a shelter somewhere where they can offer your pet, who you have loved, a chance at a second happy home. Isn't that right? Good girl. Molly, Pudding, Rosie and Emily have all come to us from previous homes and it has been our pleasure to offer them a place within our home. Maybe you yourself have become unwell or maybe you're feeling a bit too old to look after your pet as you used to. Let's take Stompy for example. He should 
with good care reach 100 years old. Now, with a vessel in the world, I'm not going to reach 100 years old. I'm in my mid 40s already. So he is hopefully going to well outlive me. And I have to have a plan in place for when I'm no longer able to look after him. And that certainly means leaving him in my will, finding a new home for him before that time comes. Now Maisie's come to talk to you about probably the hardest point. When your pet becomes in pain or perhaps is too sick to recover even with really good veterinary care. In an ideal world your pet will pass away peacefully in their sleep but in every likelihood you will have to ask for your vet to intervene and the vet will discuss your options with you. The vet might invite you to be present at the end or they may take your pet away to do what they need to do somewhere peaceful and quiet. And you or the adult with you will be asked to sign a consent form to say that you agree to them putting your pet to sleep at this time. And now Daisy and I are going to talk about the options that your vet might give you. The quickest and cheapest option is to take your pet home with you once it's been put to sleep and you can then bury it in your own garden. The next option is to have your pet cremated as part of a group. That does mean that you won't get any ashes back but you also don't have to try and find somewhere to bury your pet. The last and most expensive option is to have an individual cremation and your pet's ashes will be returned to you in a little container you can choose to scatter them or, or just keep them. There are other options like pet cemeteries but vets practices don't tend to offer that to you. That is the sort of thing you would do when you take your animal back home with you. You can then make that decision. Now I don't care how strong or tough you think you are, the loss of a pet will affect you. I don't care whether it's a horse that you've had for 15 years or it's a stick insect that you've had for three months. Pets are family and we grieve their loss as if they were a family member or a friend. And please try, try not to listen to people who say, oh, but it's just a... It doesn't matter. Every animal, reptile and bird has its own personality and it responds to you, its owner. It trusts you. I can't tell you the number of guinea pigs I've had that have run across the vet's table to me because it doesn't like what the vet is trying to do to them. It makes you feel very loved <laughs> when they come running to you. So I beg you, please don't let other people make you feel silly for how you feel about the loss of your pet. Hey, Felicity. So capture every memory you can, whether that's photographs, on video, in your mind, remember the joy and the love that your pet has brought you in the time you've had together. But ultimately, honour your pet and be prepared to make some very tough decisions on their behalf when the time comes. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye. <laughs> She's a fidget. <laughs> it wouldn't be a nightmare. Uh, that could be down to illness, and that might be a short term infection. Or, oh, tilly kisses. And that might be a short term infection. Tilly. <laughs> That might be a short term in <laughs> Stompy the tortoise, for example, is going to live hopefully to about a hundred years old. What can you smell?
girl. See you there.